when you think about pre-performance rituals, you talked about priming. So when you think about pre-performance rituals, I know you, uh, we've talked about some of this stuff between us and, and, and other podcasts that you've done with the Seahawks to prime them into kind of group flow states for the game. When you think about pre-performance pre routines, how many steps do you like? How do you vary it? How do you think about it? Um, are you using the routine to try to actually put people into flow or are you trying to put them at the edge of flow so once they actually get into the game, that does the rest, et cetera? No, that's good. Okay. Let me start with a note and then I'll concretely answer your question is that I'm not a fan of routines. And the reason is because when you think about the highest level, it is the experience of breaking form. So it's from right. structure to break structure, right? Is where we're trying to get to. And I'm not sure that adding structure helps people break structure. So the routines are nested in a particular phase of development and they are substandard to the phase, which is like, Hey, let's go, <laughs> whatever it is, right? Whether it's a hard conversation, whether it's a, something you're going to huck, you know, off the, off the back country, you know, or if it's um, a presentation, fill in the blanks, right. Or it's snapping the ball and, and getting a toss off, whatever it might be. It's like, you want to, the ultimate state is, Hey, let's go. And if I need to do something at some point in my arc of my professional understanding of how to be more present and be more me, and I need a structure and routine. Okay. That's where it sits. Then to concretely ask, and, and let me actually slow down because in elite sport, we think about periodization. So there's phases, right? That, that we walk people through and during some phases it's messy. We're actually seeing some decreases in performance. And we know that anytime you introduce a new intervention, you introduce a new skill that you're going to work on. There's a natural dip in performance. So part of the science is knowing the art, what, when to introduce it in, in an arc of somebody, you know, and then when not to muddle with something to concretely answer your question is I'm a fan of something like three things, right? Like one, two, three things that, that you do. And then the, the, what we're priming toward is to be in that state. And that state is, it's a presence with an ideal mindset that gets them right to the edge to find the, their ability to trust themselves, to be curious, to take risks, to be on that, um, on that emotional mental frontier to let it go, to let go. Mike, the way I'm interpreting that, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm totally off, but are you sort of saying that, so it, it's a reliance on an ability to get into a state versus on a routine. So you want to, you want to get yourself to that state, ideally with minimal routine rather than be relying on a routine. Oh yeah. So, so in that arc that we're talking about a periodized program, there's times that we need to practice things, right? And that practice is okay for pre-performance routine, but knowing that we're going to let go of that, mm -hmm. right? At some point right in the arc of mastery at some point, we're going to let go of that. And that's the breaking of form. That's the inviting of chaos. That's like, like, I, listen, you two are really good at what you do. I doubt you did a pre-performance routine before you turned on your mics and set up your camera. I, I doubt it. I do for skiing have a pre-performance routine, right? I have a thing I do the top 30 seconds of, a, of the lift. Um, especially if I'm going to go sk ski something, no, really, it's, you know, it's nothing more than like, you know, putting in my headphones and like wiggling my hips to loosen up my hips, but gets me ready to go. I've never in my life been able to find something because that the state that put me into is not a state I want to write in. Right. So I've never been able to find a pre-performance. I mean, I have my morning routine, but it's basically like get from bed to desk as fast as possible and get to it. Right. And know that the first couple minutes are going to suck. And then I'm into it. Um, I've often wondered, is there like something I could do th for three seconds? The only thing I really do is I have to walk from my house to my office and I always look at the scar stars because it's four o'clock in the morning. So it's not, it's night on. I always look at the, the, I can usually see the big dipper and the rest of the galaxy. So I do that.
Yeah, but I it's mean, not it right. It doesn't do what the skiing one does. Well, I think what you're describing there is structure. You've got some structure, and that structure helps to keep with some cadence, with some you know growth arcs. But the routine is something different. The routine is meant to actually um, wake up, right, or agitate, if you will, your ideal mindset. So that's what it's for. It's physical things that you do that are paired with psychological states, right? And so for a classic, super simple, concrete example is like when I, this is what I used to do when I played a bunch of like hoops down in the, I didn't play college hoops, but I played a bunch of hoops at that time. Cause you're six, nine. I, yeah, right. <laughs> I tie my shoes and um, as I was tying my shoes, I say uh, fast feet, lock it down. And then I kind of pull the bow down. I get to my other shoe and I say, trust your open shot, move your feet, lock it down. So this was me practicing, you know, getting my mm -hmm. mind right. Mm -hmm. That's it's that simple. You know, it's just, they're little, they're little physical things that you do to get to a, um, a mental state, if you will. Mm. It's considered a skill. Mike, I'd love to hear some examples of, of pre-performance rituals or when you mentioned one, two, three, could you dive a little more deeply into, into what you mean by that? I'm a fan of thresholds. So crossing through threat thresholds, like sometimes when you cross through, it's this natural kind of physical structure that you're passing through. And it's like, drop something, grab something, you know, like let go of something, you know, to activate something, or it's just this purposeful kind of moment. And, and so maybe it's just kind of putting your head up and your, and your um, shoulders back and you say something like, let's fucking go, you know, whatever it might be, whatever the vibe is for you. And so I'm a fan of thresholds and I'm a fan of making it really simple. And um, I'm also a fan of saying, you don't need any of them because the, uh, the end game is to put yourself into the present moment in an ideal state. You don't need a routine to do that. If a routine can help you get there, great, use it, play with it. But it's not something that's supposed to lock you. You know, it's something that's supposed to just support you and nudge you. Just to put some context around this for folks, there is a long history in kind of peak performance psychology and, and, and coaching of coaching people to develop fairly complicated pre-performance routines, 10 to 15, 20 minute, do all these different things, visualizations to bring back memories of times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're talking about is both of us are a fan of shrinking that down massively into something that is very, very deployable you know, in, in real world situations, what we're essentially, what we're discussing is what's the ideal three second version of what the literature says should take 15, 20 minutes. So that's essentially the, the framing around the discussion. For and then I'd even argue, like, I'm, I'm take it one step further. I'm not sure that it's even, it's even the right thing to even talk about too much, you know, because it's like people want to glob onto something. And that glomming is really, um, I'm not sure that's the right thing. It's almost like I'm so fatigued right now, you guys, with like tactics. And mm -hmm. I feel like I've just been dumped. I've been turned upside down, grabbed my, my ankles. And like, I feel like people want to shake the lint out of my pockets. Like, well, okay, <laughs> the secrets? there's no freaking secrets. There are none. There's so, no secrets here. Yeah, one of the questions Stephen loves getting asked is, uh, you know, what do I do Monday morning to get into flow? Yeah, I mean... There's no hacks. I'm sorry if you're vibing on the hacks. There are no hacks. You don't want Steven or myself or Rian or your surgeon or your tattoo artist or your car driver to be a hack. Why would you want to be a hack? You don't want, if it's serious, you don't want hacks. What you want is wisdom. What you want is insight. What you want is something durable that's, that's also nimble. That's a psychological framework we're talking about. That takes time. But the way to increase the um, sturdiness of it is time in present moment. <laughs> and so we can talk about what are the practices to get to the present moment more often? What are the things that pull you out of it? That's really cool. And the, the idea like that there's like, if I could just do a couple things, I I'm glad you're fatigued with it too. It's a fundamental commitment. It's a fundamental orientation to design your life around fill in the blank. Yes. And yeah. then that thing, whatever the blank is, ought to be your purpose. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. 
Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.